But I'm not a horse fan, so it just doesn't, you know, even though I created the character, just don't lie. You love horses. You can't, you can't deny it at this point. I am not a horse person. You're a horse lover. I'm, we not, all a, know it. I'm not a horse lover. <laughs> <laughs> we all know it. Welcome to episode 75 of Comical Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Corbett, and with me is... Lord Horst I thought you were a known writer. Uh, not, what? <laughs> <laughs> shake, shake, shake! <laughs> There's a great video that's going up on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube in a little while of Miguel doing the uh, Beetlejuice dance. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so make sure, make sure to go check that out, guys. It's not that one. Remember, it's the Winona Ryder dance at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I meant. That's why I called you Renota, Renota Ryder. Well, I appreciate that, man. I'm not shoplifting anything around here. No? Huh? Yeah, that was earlier. <laughs> yeah. Was earlier. <laughs> well, let's not waste any time. Let's talk some comics because we got a lot to go over today. So what were your top two this week, man? Hey, man, number two, Secret Wars number one. Secret Wars was really good. Jonathan Hickman's the writer and Asad Rivik is the artist. A lot happens. Who do you root for, man? Well, you definitely root for the Earth 616 people, right? Yeah, I guess you're supposed to because that's where we're from. <laughs> well... <laughs> That, again, that's fantasy, <laughs> not reality, so we're not really from there, but I'm not a big fan of the Ultimate Universe, so I'm definitely rooting for the 616ers. What are you, Ray Mysterio now? Oh, that's 619, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> yeah, so uh, in this story, all kinds of shit happens. I mean, the, the two worlds are about to collide. Both sets of S.H.I.E.L.D., both sets of uh, Avengers are going to war with each other to try to destroy the other planet so that their planet is the one that survives. It's freaking awesome. So this is the initial battle of Secret Wars. And you've got Nick Fury uh, working with the ultimate Mr. Fantastic to create this, like, bubble thing where they can open it up and, and send a bunch of ships out to uh, attack the other planet. Uh, you got the Ultimate Avengers versus the Normal Avengers. Uh, all kinds of crazy shit's happening. And there's a lot of little one-shot story kind of things going on, too. Like, I love the fact that a lot of the villains decide to go to an end-of-the-world party that Wilson Fisk is throwing. And, you know, they're celebrating the end of the world, whatever. And the door kicks open and Punisher's there. He's like, just because the world's going to end doesn't mean you bitches don't get to die. <laughs> I got all these extra bullets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there's so many cool things in this book. And yeah, it was really good. It did not make my top three, though. Uh, really? It's actually my number four because there was one book I liked just a little bit more. But yeah, it was really good. This one was running in the running for my top one. I mean, you can't really start off a book like they start this one off. I mean, first of all, we know the universe is going to collide. So we know that's going to happen. So that's like the big thing. It's going to happen. Uh but then the 616, you know, they know what's happening, and then the un- Ultimate Universe figures it out. So they all, like, go attack each other to destroy each other's world. And it's just, like, on. I mean, it's like fighting, fighting, fighting. You, what else could you ask for? And then, of course, you got Thanos. You got the Cabal watching what's going on. You got the Illuminati doing their thing to try to take out the other world on both sides of it. But then you also had that scene in the beginning. which Do you remember what that was? Uh, the scene where they were showing how they tried to stop. No, no, no. This has been a day since you read it. So... In the very beginning, you have Doom and Doctor Strange and one other person. I'm not sure who it was because he was like obscured in shadow, going to talk to some ultimate force in the universe. Oh yeah, that's right. And I don't really know who it is, but I can only assume that it's going to be the Beyonder because he was the person who put together the very first Secret Wars. So you can assume that he has something to do with this one as well. Okay. So uh, Beyonder's always been a really interesting cosmic figure in the Marvel universe because his, his or her, depending on which version you're reading, power set is so off the charts. And so unpredictable and so weird. Um, I'm, I'm really excited for this series as a whole. I mean, I, I love the first Secret Wars. Secret Wars 2 is kind of okay, but the Beyonder is actually one of my favorite cosmic entities. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how Doom is trying to use this as his advantage because that's what he did in all the other ones as well, is try to manipulate everybody to turn things to his benefit. So it's going to be cool. I'm more interested in Thanos and the Cabal. But uh, you can't start a book better off than what they did. It was just great to me. Yeah, so what was, was your number two? Uh, my number two is actually God Hates Astronauts number eight from Brian Brown. <laughs> uh, this is just a wacky, wild, crazy, nutso, out there <laughs> issue. As usual, God Hates Astronauts is really hard to quantify. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. There's so much craziness going on. But basically what it comes down to is the... The wife of Staryer travels back in time to find Staryer when he was still a young man. He still had a normal head. Uh, he was still a regular superhero. And she's like all beat up. She's old. She's haggard. She has an eye patch. 
and her younger version of herself is like pissed off to meet herself. And she's like, I'm not turning into you, you stupid fat bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so old Starrier's wife collects Starrier and takes him into the future and is telling him that she needs his help to save their daughter who's been captured by the uh, tiger eating cheeseburger and the crab people. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've never read God Hates Astronauts, I'm sure this sounds confusing as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you have read God Hates Astronauts, this is kind of confusing. But You're doing pretty good. It's just awesome. Uh, so they go through several different jumps into the future. And every single time they make a jump, Starrier wants to go and see himself because she tells him at one point he gets this giant, bloated, massive, disgusting head. So they go and they meet that one. Which was disgusting. And it was. And that version of himself is like, hey, I want to go with you. And he jumps onto the chair and time travels with him, too, to the future where he doesn't actually have his own head anymore. It's been replaced by a hippo head. <laughs> so there's, there's all kinds of wacky, crazy stuff going on. And then she steals a ring so she gets her powers back. Wasn't a cow head. Yes, it is a cow head, actually. I'm sorry. I'm getting my characters confused because yeah. there's so many bizarre characters. Yeah, tell me about it. Uh, Admiral Tiger Eating a Cheeseburger is there confronting the people of Earth, ready to destroy them. When you find out Prince Tiger Eating a Cheeseburger is still alive, and he's the one that started this uh, whole catastrophe that's been going on. So, you know, the Admiral rejoices and is like, oh, I don't have to take you guys out. My son's still alive. And what happens? The time traveling chair appears right on top of him and explodes him. <laughs> Just nuts. So I mean, it's just it's just one long convoluted story that's just full of awesomeness and lots of jokes about Back to the Future and other time travel stories. And uh, Ryan Brown is just a creative genius. I, I can't say enough good things about this book. You left out your favorite part. I will say though that 3D Ghost is back <laughs> and Charles Soule is no longer the narrator, which in a way is kind of disappointing, but it's also kind of cool because 3D Ghost came back drunk. And the whole time he complained about <laughs> what a shitty job Charles Soule did and like how nobody gives him any respect. <laughs> and just made it really funny. It was funny all the way from start to finish. I laughed several times. Please tell my wife I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so if you ever read God Hates Astronauts, I think the first trade is already out. Uh, go pick it up and check it out, especially if you like wacky, crazy stories, because you know I do. You know his next book is probably going to have Simon as the narrator. Oh, I would love to see Simon. Yeah, you know, I'm still trying to get that one uh, variant cover with Simon on it. So Simon is uh, Ryan Brown's cat. And he is the weirdest looking cat I've ever seen. He, his mouth is always agape. He always has a real vacant look in his eyes. And uh, he's always wearing a red hoodie that Ryan Brown apparently bought him at a, a thrift store somewhere. So the cat's just, just really cool. And he used him for a couple of variant covers. And he's always posting pictures of him on Facebook and Twitter and stuff. And it just seems like such a bizarre animal. I know, right? Pretty soon Simon will have his own Twitter handle or who knows what else he's going to take him with. Yeah. But it's, yeah. Actually, that's, that's really cool. There's a lot of comic book creators that have pets. And their pets are just as famous as they are. <laughs> like uh, Justin Jordan's cat. Uh huh. Uh, Tom Waits. Uh, she's adorable. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the flip side of that, you have Simon, who's kind of ugly. <laughs> yeah. But, but Simon rules, man, so, because Simon has fans. I mean, my kids love Simon. Simon does have fans. There's a lot of writers out there that have cats. So if you're a fan of comics and you really want to get into the industry, uh, you know, first step should be getting a cat. Right. Yeah. Name yeah. is Simon. No. Yeah. <laughs> so what's your number one then, man? Oh, man. We go back old school, baby. I take it to Punisher number 18. Punisher number 18 is actually my number one book as well. Nathan Edmondson is the writer, and the artists are Mitch Gerards and Brent Schooner. Uh, this is an incredibly brutal, awesome, perfect Punisher story. Uh, I loved everything about it from the beginning all the way to the end. If you know what's been going on, the Punisher's been down in Mexico fighting the cartel because they came into Los Angeles and basically destroyed his entire city bunch of cops died. There was a huge revolt going on. The Howling Commandos came in and they were supposed to take Punisher out. They chose not to because he convinced them he was going to be useful. And then he tried to take on the government because he found out that somebody high up, like a senator, was responsible for all the stuff that had gone down. So he realized he couldn't fight the government. You know, <laughs> actually, there's a great line in the comic. He's driving with the head of the cartel. And the head of the cartel is like, what are you doing, Vado? You're not going to survive this. And he's like, look, I tried to fight the government. That ain't, my, that ain't my job. He's like, you can't fight the government. I just like to punish shit. <laughs> <laughs> so he drives to the middle of this freeway in Los Angeles, turns his car sideways, parks it, pisses off a whole bunch of people, drags the drug cartel leader out into the middle of the road, waits for people to start breaking out their cell phones, shoots him right in the head in front of everybody. That's Frank Castle. That's the great punisher, man. <laughs> Cops are like, you know, stopping him as, on the street because he's walking with the symbol on, brave and as proud as can be. And... You know, there, there's some of them that want to arrest him, but there's other ones that are like, just let him be. He's doing good for the city. And there's other people that blame him for the cops dying before, because if he hadn't been there, then the cartels wouldn't have moved in. The government would have gotten involved and people probably wouldn't have died. And one of the people that blames him is his uh, former helper cop. 
Spoiler. Yeah, she turns on him at the end and in a really drastic way that I was not expecting. I mean, he, of course, there's more to the story than this. Punisher kills a bunch more people because that's just what he does. Of course. <laughs> but, you know, there's some really cool fight scenes. Uh, him breaking people's necks and noses and shooting guys. and But, man, the way the book ended, it was just kind of heart-wrenching. I know, man. She didn't have to mess the Punisher up or his damn dog. What the hell? Yeah, but it was, it was really, really just an excellent story. And I'm sure it's going to be invalidated by Secret Wars anyways. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's not a bad way to close out the series. Yeah. It was, he was punishing people. That's right. It was great. So if you're a fan of The Punisher, go check that out. I am. <laughs> well, moving on to our pick of the week, I'm pretty sure we both have the same one. Uh, it's a book from Black Mask Studios called We Can Never Go Home. And this is issue number two. It's written by Matthew Rosenberg and Patrick Kindelow, and it's drawn by Josh Hood. And this is issue two of the series. We did read issue one, but not on the week that it came out. Uh, one of our friends who works at the comic shop said, hey, you got to check this book out. It's really cool. And, and typically I'm skeptical of, of some small press books if they're not from writers that I'm already familiar with. Uh, but I went ahead and took a chance and checked this one out. And wow, it's just phenomenal. Uh, it's about this guy who's down on his luck. He's like a high school kid and he's really unpopular. He's bullied all the time. There's a girl he likes and he tries to talk to her and her jock football player of a boyfriend beats the crap out of him. And then... One day he's uh, wandering near like a lookout point by himself and comes across the football player's truck and the girl. And the football player is kind of trying to force himself on the girl, and he tries to intervene. Well, at first the football player knocks him down and is getting ready to kick his ass, but then the girl's li eyes light up, and you realize she has some kind of superpower, and she hits the football player so hard he goes like flying through the air and slams into his truck, and then he gets in the car and drives away. Well... At first, she's like really scared because she's revealed herself to this new person. So the boy tells her that he has powers too, which we haven't seen manifest yet. No. But he tells her that he has a favor to ask of her, and he wants her to come back to his house with him. So they go back to his house and meet his abusive dad. And his abusive dad is like, you're worthless. What are you doing? Why are you bringing this girl to the house? And that's where the first issue ends. Well, in the second issue, it starts out with the dad laying a hand on the, the boy, and the girl steps in again and hits the dad so hard that it breaks his neck and kills him. And she freaks out because she killed somebody. The boy's like, thank you. Thank you for killing my father. He was a horrible man. He takes the gun that his dad had, uh, takes some stuff, and he's like, we need to get out of here. We need to leave the town. So they get in his dad's car, and they get on the road. And they decide they need to get some money because they don't know where they're going. They don't have anything. And she's like, well, what do you want to do, rob a bank? We're not going to rob a bank. And he's like, no, no, I got a good idea. So they pull up to this drug dealer's house and knock on the door. And the drug dealer's like, what the hell? No, get the fuck out of here. The girl's eyes start glowing, and she knocks open the door, <laughs> and he goes in there with the gun, waving it around, and demanding money. Well, the drug dealer's like, ha-ha, the joke's on you. You guys came too late because the bag was already picked up. There's no money here. Well, just then, this huge, thuggish-looking dude comes in with a bag of money, <laughs> and a fight breaks out. And the girl, who has the superpower punches or whatever, goes after the big dude, hits him once, and he's like, wow, that's quite a punch you got, but you don't know how to fight. And he tackles her, and he's getting ready to kill her. And then the boy steps up with the gun and just shoots him in the head. And they take all the money and go on the run. They end up staying at this hotel. And it uh, turns out that the people the drug dealer worked for tracked him down. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't know how the hell they figured that out that fast. I explained the entire story. <laughs> yeah, you did. You pulled a bri -fi there. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's, it's just so good. And I didn't want to like leave stuff out because then it might make it seem less intriguing. Uh, Black Mask Studios is a real small print publisher. So I can't say enough good things about this book. I highly recommend going and checking it out. Uh, it's something you probably wouldn't pick up on your own if nobody told you about it, but you should, because this is a really, really cool story. Yeah, I can't wait to see what the boy's powers are. If he even has them. Yeah, I think he lied. Yeah, I think he lied, too. He's just a punk. But uh, we'll find out. Yeah, we shall see. <laughs> so that's it for comics this week, man. Oh, okay. It was a good week. It was. It was a lot of decent books. Yeah, pretty so, much everything I read I liked. Yeah, because you decided to go get your books like at old dark 30 in the middle of the night. <laughs> that's true. Uh, Bedrock City, the comic book shop here in Houston, they had a Secret Wars release party. Uh, 10 p.m. until midnight, Tuesday before comic book day. I was sleeping. You were sleeping. Because I wasn't feeling good. <laughs> I was not. I was there at 10 o'clock, and the parking lot was completely full. There was nowhere to park at all, so I ended up par parking over by the Pollo Tropical <laughs> and walking all the way to Bedrock. Oh, that's such a long walk. Well, where I was parked it was. It was like all the way in the far corner. <laughs> so <laughs> I get there. There's a line out the door. I had to wait to get in. And then they had a limited number of Secret Wars, and they were telling people you could only get two. Uh, basically, I had to fight through a line to get my Secret Wars, and I had to fight through another line to get to the wall and take my books. And that's funny, because when I walked in there Wednesday, they had like 150 of them still in the shelves. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, we got a limited amount of issues here. Well, I, they, that night, they were definitely uh, 
They were concerned? They were definitely being conservative with them because uh-huh. they didn't know how many they were going to have left. Gotcha. So you know, I fought my way to the, the guy, got my copy of Secret Wars, made my way to the wall, got the rest of my books, went to check out. And, of course, they're not letting anybody check out until midnight. No more books on the <laughs> wall. Gotcha. So I ended up standing in the front of the line until 12.01. You're such a nerd. <laughs> I, stood, I stood in the same place for basically an hour and a half and then checked out and went home. But I did talk to a lot of people. I met a couple of cosplayers. Uh, I met a couple of people that I've talked to before on Twitter and Instagram that are big fans of not necessarily the show but comic books in general. So that was kind of cool. And then uh, I talked to my friend Carrie who's – running the uh, podcasting panel at Comic Palooza, as well as was on GIC Pod this past week. Yeah, I heard. It's a good episode. Yeah, a lot of metal. Yeah. <laughs> I like metal. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was pretty fun. It was nice to pick that up. Nice. It was a long week, though. Yeah, it was. Because, you know, we went and saw Age of Ultron last Thursday, uh, right after we finished recording. Mm-hmm. And then I put out the show that next night. I sit up and, and worked on it a little bit. And then Saturday, I went on another show, and we were on TV, actually. Carrie, the guy I mentioned before, his show got covered by a local news station, and he wanted me on that episode, so I could kind of promote Comical as well, because he's a big fan of the show. Yeah, you got a haircut, and you got a little beard trim. I cleaned trim. up a bit. Yeah, you exactly. beard trimmed, and all I saw was the back of your head. I didn't want, <laughs> I didn't want to look like a Sasquatch on TV, but all, <laughs> all they recorded was the, the back of me, and like the, as much of my shirt that said www.comic. So, <laughs> didn't really promote us as much as I hoped, but it was a lot of fun. You should have turned around and go, pow! <laughs> I did that show, and then I was also on another show called uh, Warlocks Games and Brew. Uh, they're another local Houston podcast that wanted to do kind of an interview with me about Comic Palooza because they'd never been before. So that was fun. Uh, Saturday was just really busy for me. Apparently, is there planted horsticles out there? I didn't know <laughs> <Yeah>. this. <laughs> they, they do an improv story uh, at the beginning of every episode, and on that one, they asked me to name the planet they were visiting. So, of course, I had to pay homage to you. So, planted horsticles. Planted horsticles. Nice. Of course. <laughs> So that, that was a lot of fun. Uh, if you want to hear either one of those, go check those out. Uh, the most recent episode of Metal Geeks or Warlocks Games and Brew. Ah. And then uh, Sunday, I spent a lot of time working on the website, and uh, I started working on our Cafe Press site. It is now up and Woo-hoo! available. There's a ton more shirt designs coming in the next couple of days. Uh, Chris Ryder, our artist, just emailed them all to me this afternoon, so I haven't had a chance to get them uploaded yet. But if you want to check out what we have already, you can go to cafepress.com slash comical podcast. Uh, you can also find it on our website. There's a link at the top that says merchandise. And we got all kinds of cool stuff on there. There's t-shirts, there's mouse pads, there's uh, what? Dog shirts. There's a dog shirt, there's a wallet, <laughs> there's a watch, there's a there's all yeah, there's hoodies. Yeah, so there's there's all kinds of cool comical stuff on there. So if you want to support the show, uh, wait a couple days because there's gonna be a bunch of new new designs. Uh, but go out there and check them out and, and please buy something. Hey, do we get any kickback on that? A little bit. It's it's another way for people to support the show. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. All right, because, you know, I've been, like, close to buying a wallet here pretty soon. <laughs> and I was like, hey, I need that wallet. Oh, I need that dog <laughs> shirt. <laughs> so, cafepress.com slash comical podcast. Very nice. I thought so. So, speaking of Age of Ultron, what did you think of it? We went together to see it. Uh, took our friend Will, who you might remember from episode three, if you've been listening that long. <laughs> yeah, he didn't like Marwan. No, he's an Aquaman guy. Oh. But uh, we all went and saw Age of Ultron. What did you think? I thought the movie was really good. I don't think it was better than one. I'll agree But with you. I thought it was really good. Uh, I was disappointed with a few things. Um, Ultron, uh, eh, he was a little too nice for me, too I guess. Nice. Yeah, he could have been. I was expecting far worse. Okay. Other than that, it was okay. And I like what they did with Quicksilver at the end. I thought that was like, oh, that's kind of lame. That was actually my favorite part. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know. There was I enjoyed the movie a lot. My kids enjoyed it a lot too. They matter of fact, they're like, "Hey, can we take mom this Saturday and we'll take grandma on Sunday so we can see it two more times?" <laughs> it was really good. Uh, I felt like the first one was definitely much better. I, I feel like several of the movies were much better than Avengers two. I thought Captain America two was better. I thought Guardians was better. Um, I probably put Avengers: Age of Ultron somewhere near the middle of the pack. There's some really cool stuff that happens. I think they hit all the notes they had to hit. The fight scenes are just incredible, like you expect them to be. The Hulkbuster versus Hulk fight was sick. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, the final fight scene was a little reminiscent of the final fight scene in the Avengers movie. You know, they were they were all fighting on this small island versus tons of little Ultrons. And the Ultrons were getting beaten apart real easily, just like the Jatari were getting beat pretty easily in the first one. Uh, Ultron, I did like. I probably liked him more than you did. They took him a, a funny way. Because it was James Spader, they gave him a lot more comedic kind of uh, statements and stuff. 
And I, I liked that about him. I was expecting him to be really dark and somber and serious, even though James Spader was playing the character. Uh, so when he was actually kind of lively and cracking jokes, uh, I liked that a whole lot more. Uh, I did kind of feel like the movie was missing a little something, though, which it was. There's that whole extra 40 minutes of footage that actually got cut. Huh. So when the director's cut comes out, we're going to see the whole thing, which I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to. Apparently there's a whole scene with Loki that they took out because it, it made the movie not flow the way they wanted it to. Mm-hmm. Apparently uh, Joss Whedon was trying to set it up so that he could have Captain Marvel and Spider-Man show up in that last scene where the new Avengers are revealed. Oh. But Marvel didn't want him to do it, so he Come on. ended up not doing it. Uh, but there's, there's a lot of cool stuff. I was reading over some of the things that were supposed to be in there that didn't quite make it, and uh, all of it sounds really cool. I wish they had done just a little bit more. I mean, there's not much more they could have done. It was two and a half hours. Yeah, so it's now you tell me the movie's going to be three hours and ten minutes with the extra footage. <laughs> with the extra footage, it's three hours and ten minutes. But, I mean, if there's anything that's proof that you can do a movie right with a shitload of characters, it's Avengers Age of Ultron. Because there was tons and tons of characters doing stuff. And, uh, you know, DC should definitely look at that and, and try to make their giant casts work. Uh, <laughs> I felt like the Scarlet Witch was really well handled. Quicksilver was okay. I don't think he was as good as the Days of Future Past Quicksilver. Yeah, because he was funny there. Yeah. Well, he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be a smart ass, and he's supposed to be, you know, really kind of quippy like Spider-Man and cracking jokes and, you know, using his speed to make fun of people and to do goofy things. But all he really did was run around and, and punch Ultron and try to grab Thor's hammer one time and then die. <laughs> like, Quicksilver didn't do enough in the movie for me. So I, when he died, I was just kind of like, nah, I don't really care. Were you happy with the way they did Hawkeye? Uh, I was happy with him getting more lines and getting more fleshed out as a character because a lot of people that don't read the comics don't really know much about him. They just think he's a random dude with a bow and arrow who is for some reason helping them. And obviously he's a shield agent, but they didn't think he was very special in the first Avengers. Uh, it kind of fleshed him out a bit and, and showed how good he really is. The only thing that I didn't really like was Linda Cardellini. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Linda Cardellini and I was expecting, or I was, I was hoping that she was going to have a more, prominent role in the Marvel universe than just being Hawkeye's wife. So, <laughs> you know, that, that was kind of a letdown for me because I was eagerly waiting to see who she was going to be, but now I'm still happy she made it in. Cool. I enjoyed seeing the, uh, Scarlet witch. I like the actress that plays Scarlet witch. Uh, and of course I didn't have a problem with the Quicksilver actor because both of them were in Godzilla. Uh, I've liked Jeremy Renner since back in the day. And I think he does a really good Hawkeye. I like what they did with Hawkeye. I, I think I enjoy. I don't even know if I really enjoyed what they did with the Hulk and Black Widow. You know? the, the love story kind of thing. Uh, I, I think it was a good plot device for calming the Hulk down, you know, to give him that, that female, you know, soothing voice kind of thing to, to calm him down, to lullaby him back into Banner. Uh, and he kind of got some of that in the first movie, too. There was a little bit of tension there between them on top of being the the teammates and sometimes being at odds and fighting and stuff, but there was definitely like some romantic tension there and they just explored that further. Uh, it also gave him a good way to end the movie where Hulk got on the plane and just kind of shot off to nowhere, which, you know, there's rumors that planet Hulk might become a reality. That could be the way that happens. Yeah. Hulk, pretty- Hulk could fly himself into space and then just go through a wormhole and end up on random planet X. And then instead of, you know, cause in, in the normal planet Hulk comic storyline, uh, Doctor Strange and Tony Stark and the the Illuminati basically decide that Hulk's too dangerous to keep around, and they're the ones that shoot him off to some other planet, and it gets diverted off course. He was supposed to go to like a peaceful planet where there was nobody he could hurt, and instead he ended up on Battle World, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or War World or whatever it was called. Uh, so you know him him taking himself through a wormhole and crash landing on this other planet could be just the way that Marvel movies decides to handle starting the Planet Hulk storyline. So here's a question for you: Where the hell did Thor go? He took off and he came back. Uh, I think that was an allusion to what's going to happen in Thor Ragnarok. Uh, I think that's the first instance we're going to see of something happening in the same time. Uh, like, you know, whatever happened between when he left and when he came back probably could be the entirety of the events in Ragnarok. That's insane. Because <laughs> it was like all oh, like a couple of minutes. <laughs> well, I mean, in, in the Avengers timeline, yeah. But uh, time passes differently in, in Asgard. That is true. So... A lot could happen. I, I kind of liked the waters of uh, oh. revealing or whatever. I mean, people are joking and saying that that scene was put in there just so they could have Chris Hemsworth with no shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wants to watch Thor take a bath. <laughs> I don't want to see that. I know you did. Don't lie. Black Widow, maybe, but not, not, not Thor. <laughs> Come on. But it was well done, and, and it alluded to, to what's going to happen in Ragnarok, and it alluded to what's going to happen in the Infinity War. I'm stoked, man. I'm stoked. 
And I said before, jokingly, that the death of Quicksilver was my favorite scene, but uh, it really wasn't. My favorite scene was the mid credit scene. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it created some confusion because there's two Infinity Gauntlets, which Kevin Feige had come out and said there was two Infinity Gauntlets before. We don't know if it's a different time period where the, both of them are existing. We don't know if uh, Thanos has gone back in time and taken one, which is why there's two in this exact moment in time or, or what. But I'm sure we're going to find out. Uh, that one scene, to me, kind of alludes to the fact that maybe the first Infinity War movie is going to be the Thanos Quest storyline. Because uh, at some point, he's going to have to collect the gems. Right. And I'm, I'm really hoping that they do it justice, and they give him his screen time and make him the focal point of the story. Uh, Thanos Quest is hands down 100% my favorite comic story of all time. I've read so many comics. you know, I've read like 15,000 comics in my life. But Thanos Quest, no doubt, my favorite story of all time. It's a great book. I agree with you 100%. And it, it's him going around, getting the gems, and you know each individual thing poses its own challenge. And everybody who has a gem is incredibly powerful on their own because they know what they have. And Thanos, despite how powerful he is without the gems, uh, is, is barely a match for some of the people he goes up against. So I'm really, really looking forward to watching him try to get those stones. And I hope they don't just kind of fast forward and say, oh, Thanos has all six stones, let's fight him. And then they'll do like flashbacks to, to him getting them. I, I hope they give him the screen time he needs and flesh out the character the way he needs to be fleshed out. Uh, the quest, which one, uh, just throw this out real quick, which one did you like the most? Getting it from who? Which stone? I think the gardener was my favorite of them. Uh, but all of them, all the fights and all of the creative ways he has to get the stones are all really good. And, you know, despite how excited I am to see the stones and see him go and get them, I'm a million and a half more times excited to see Adam Warlock show up. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I can't wait for it. Man, I tell you what, Captain America 3, Thor Ragnarok, and if they do that Hulk movie, oh, jeez. <laughs> it's going to be, Phase 3 is looking up. Phase 4 is going to be even more badass, I think. <sighs> I tell you what, man, one of my favorite parts of the movie, again, real quick, was just watching Captain America. You know, he was no longer, you know, he was hanging in there with Ultron for a little bit, you know? He wasn't, like, getting punked. He was doing his thing. So, you know, I'm a big Captain America guy, so I was pretty pleased with that. So I, I can't wait to see uh, Captain America 3. Well, Captain America 3 is going to be Civil War. It's, it's going to be all the characters again. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like Avengers 2.5. <laughs> yeah. So You got to give love to Cap, though, man. Yeah, Cap's okay. I'm not, I'm not the biggest Captain America fan. I did like the second Captain America movie. It's in my top three yeah. of the movies. Uh, but That's my number two. That's probably my number three. Behind Hulk and Avengers? Behind Guardians and Avengers. Oh, Guardians and Avengers? Yeah. Wow, Hulk is four? Hulk is four. Damn. Yeah, yeah it, it moved down. See, Guardians is three for me. I love Guardians. Avengers is one for me. Cool. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, you know we are. Midnight. <laughs> Definitely. And Ant-Man. Oh. The trailer for Ant-Man. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what. Uh, Ant-Man, you know, we're big fans of Michael Douglas. And Paul He's Rudd, going home. That's right. <laughs> Paul Rudd's a great, a great pick. And just how they go from huge to small to the battle scenes, and you like you see them on the train, and they pan back, and it's freaking Thomas. And uh, I mean, it's all about perspective <laughs> with Ant Man. Like when from his perspective in the trailer, you know, he's on this train that's traveling 100 miles an hour, and he's fighting Yellow Jacket, and they're shooting you know power beams out of their hands and jumping from car to car. And then there's like this massive train crash and this big explosion, and the camera pans out, and it's a little Thomas the train like. <laughs> Going around a track and then it hits a, a little piece of wood and then falls over. Because <laughs> yeah, you think it's like they're on a big freaking train and it's like, oh, shit, they're on the Amtrak or some crap. And it's like freaking amazing. And then they're like, oh, these bastards. <laughs> and that's like the funniest thing in the world. That I could not imagine a more perfect scene to sum up what I hope the Ant Man movie is. Uh, you know, it's going to be great. I, I, I've, bec I fall, I've truly fallen in love with Ant Man the last few months with the Ant Man series that's coming out now. I've always liked the character, but he's never one of my favorites. You know, reading him in Avengers and stuff, he was just kind of, kind of there. Sometimes he was cool. Sometimes it was just kind of like, eh, he's kind of a dick. But I've really fall, fallen in love with Scott Lang as Ant-Man in this current run, and I'm super excited for the movie. Yeah, it's a good run. I, I laughed, you know, because he's goofy. You know, he's trying to do this, and he's stupid, hanging out with his daughter. And then he got a little serious the last book, and it was really good. So, yeah, they're doing a great job on it. Yeah, I think so, too. And that's what's actually helped me probably get more excited about this movie. So, yeah. Ant-Man, here we come. <laughs> well, so Ant-Man's going to be really funny, man. And since we're talking about funny, why don't you tell me a funny story? <laughs> All 
All right, all right. I got one for you. Uh, so this past week, I went and visited my parents, and the whole time we were there, we didn't do very much. We just kind of sat around and talked, which was fun. It was nice to reminisce and nice to talk about stuff, and they reminded me of a few funny stories. So hey, I'm still stuck at the fact that you did nothing and you were sitting there reminiscing. Who are you? <laughs> It was nice to take a break because I, all I do is go, 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 and, and it was nice to not have to do that for once. <laughs> nice. You were sit, sit, sit. I was sit, sit, sit. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my story from when I was five years old. We went on this uh, Boy Scout field trip to the Omniplex Science Center in Oklahoma City. Okay. So the Omniplex was this place where they had all kinds of cool scientific gadgets. They had like this uh, play place kind of thing you could crawl through, but it was really like the inner ear, and you would learn about all the pieces of the ear as you crawled through it. Uh, there was a one of those electrical machines where you would touch it and the lightning would like shoot out and touch your fingers. Oh, they sweet. Had, they had one of those big pendulum clocks that would go back and forth and knock little domino things over. And they had all kinds of uh, informative shows where like scientists would come out and talk to kids about animals or about how things work and just that kind of stuff. So we were watching one of the animal presentations and you know my whole Boy Scout troop was there with me. And this guy comes out and the first one was talking about spiders and he came out with a tarantula and was showing us all kinds of stuff. And then uh -huh. somebody else came out and like with an armadillo and like just different animals. But anyways, the last one that came out was one with a snake. So for a good 20 minutes, this guy's up there talking about how snakes are our friends and how snakes are so cool because of this and that. And like, he's ta talking, talking all this good stuff about snakes and he lets the kids pet it. And then uh, at the very end, he wants to do a Q and a see if any kids have questions. So he says, uh, anybody out there want to tell me what you do if you find a snake in the wild? And all these hands shot up, and I was, like, super enthusiastic, like, jumping up. Oh, 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 like Horshack on uh, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome Back, Cotter. I was going crazy. Uh, so he called on me, and he said, you there, sir, what would you do if you found a snake in the wild? And the correct answer was supposed to be treat it with respect, like, keep your distance. You know, snakes are our friends as long as we don't agitate them or whatever. But that's not what I said. You know what I said? I said, I would go get my dad to get his shovel and cut its head off. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole room just busted out laughing because this guy had just spent 20 minutes giving us a presentation about how you're not supposed to kill him. You're supposed to leave him alone. <laughs> and uh, the guy didn't know what to say. He just looked at me like dumbfounded. And he was like, oh, uh, 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 uh. And my mom was sitting there and her best friend, who was the mother of one of the other parents, was just like pointing at her and just laughing. She was, ha, 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 it's your son. Ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the guy was really angry at me. And my mom, I, I walked up to my mom and dad and I was like, what did I do wrong? Why, why was he mad at me? And my mom was like, oh, you didn't do anything wrong. You answered that guy that right. That guy was an idiot. He was some <laughs> hippie weirdo who thought snakes were our friends. Like, <laughs> you definitely call your dad to kill that snake. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Hippie weirdo. Yeah. So that's my funny story. That's pretty damn funny. Snakes are our friend. <laughs> ooh, it's a snake. Snake, a snake. Ooh, it's a snake. Badger, badger, badger. <laughs> that's pretty damn funny. Yeah. That's right. You cut that snake's head that's off. That's right. You kill that motherfucker. <laughs> and you wear him as boots. <laughs> <laughs> Make yourself a nice little scarf. <laughs> nice belt. <laughs> It's pretty damn funny. I thought so. <laughs> snakes are our friends. What a jackass. <laughs> I bet you wouldn't have said that that damn snake would have bit his ass. Well, probably not. <laughs> so next up is a segment I'm just going to call, What's Next? Okay. So uh, we got a lot going on. Comical Podcast does. Really? Yeah. I was going on vacation. No, there's no vacation. Aw. <laughs> Coming up this month, we got a couple of great interviews. All right. Uh, first up is going to be next week, and that's going to be Gabo, the artist for Life After. And, yeah. And a ton of other stuff. He's incredibly talented. Got some uh, questions for him, man. Yeah, he actually reached out to us. He loves the show. He wanted to come on, so we're super excited to have him on. Say what? Uh, yeah. And then uh, towards the beginning of June, uh -huh. we have Jimmy Robinson coming on. Jimmy Robinson. Jimmy Robinson. I know that name. He is the sole creator of The Empty. Oh, yeah. Stretch Neck Chick. Yeah, as well as working on a ton of DC titles. Very excited to have him coming on. Oh, yeah. We got questions for him, too. So uh, make sure to tune in for those guys. I think you're going to really enjoy those episodes. Uh, also, we have Comic Palooza coming up at the end of the month, May 22nd through the 25th in Houston, the George R. Brown. Uh-huh. We're doing a ton of stuff. Yeah, we are. <laughs> We're doing four days of nonstop coverage again. Four huh? days of nonstop coverage. There's going to be all kinds of people there. They keep announcing people. Uh, yeah. You know, they just announced Col Chloe Bennett this week. Mm -hmm. uh, they announced Rosario Dawson. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which I know you're not the hugest fan of, but I, li I like Rosario Dawson. I think she'll be cool to talk to if we get to. Uh, Stan Lee's going to be there, of course. Jeremy Renner, who we were just talking about. Colby Smolders. Yes. 
Uh, lots of S.H.I.E.L.D. people, lots of Gotham people, a few CW uh, other people. I know there's going to be a couple people from iZombie mm-hmm. they are going to be there. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, comic creators. we got Walt and Louise Simonson that are going to be there, and uh, Mike McCone, Greg Horn. Uh-huh. Uh, just some cool, cool people. So I'm really excited for it. Uh, we're going to get to do a lot of interviews, and then we're also doing a few panels. So the first one's going to be Sunday morning at 11.30 a.m. in the Microsearch panel room. It's going to be the Podcasting 103 Next Level Podcasting Panel. And it's going to be us and our friends from the Metal Geeks, from BriFi Podcast, from the Rebel Radio Podcast, and from NerdFu. And then also Mike and Ming from ISO Comics. Nice. They're going to be on the panel with us. So All right. That's going to be pretty cool. They're always fun to talk to. Of course. <laughs> and then uh, Monday morning at 1130 a.m. in the Microsearch Panel Room, we are doing our very first live show. I don't like it. <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be fun. We have a ton of stuff to give away. Uh, Miguel's going to bring the horse head, and we have a, a stage show kind of thing we're kicking around the idea for. We talked about it earlier today. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> uh, we're giving away a $100 gift card to Bedrock City, which uh, pe- anybody will be free to, to enter that. It doesn't have to be people that are at Comic Palooza, but I will tell you guys on the show right before how you can enter, and then we'll be handing out flyers to everybody and anybody at Comic Palooza telling them how to enter, and uh, somebody's going to win during a live show. Uh, we're also going to have some cool stuff. I got a couple hats we're going to give away. Uh, I got uh, some candy. I got a couple He Man and She Rock Christmas special DVDs. Uh, so, so make sure you come. If you're in Houston, make sure you're at that panel because there's all kinds of shit you can win. Ah, man, we, we made it big time now? We just giving crap away? I'm just giving away extra stuff that I have. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I got some dirty draws we can give away. Uh, you can win Lord Horse Ecclesiastes' dirty drawers. <laughs> if that's your bag, if that's your cup of tea, uh, make sure you're there. <laughs> Why not, man? I hear people get rid of their dirty drawers all the time. Well, somebody's going to come up and be like, hey, where are the dirty drawers? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody going to want my dirty drawers. <laughs> and you're going to have to go in the bathroom and pull them down and bring them back. <laughs> that's nasty. <laughs> Lord Horse Ecclesiastes is free balling. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> I'll bring the dude wives. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, like I said before, we also have the Cafe Press site up, so... Go check that out if you haven't yet. Go buy your Lord Horse to Cleese Shovel My Shit shirt. That's right. And uh, lastly, we're only 25 episodes away from our 100th. What does that mean? Well, we have some cool stuff planned for our 100th episode. Oh, yeah? And the one thing, which is the only one we'll talk about today. Low twos? We're getting tattoos. Ah. Not low twos, tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> On the low twos. <laughs> there you go. There's a story. <laughs> no, 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 that's Ouch. A, that's a little too painful. <laughs> So uh, we want to get tattoos that are somehow related to the show. Mm -hmm. So what are you thinking about getting? You can have a picture of my face on your back, and I can have a little bitty star that says... No. (laughs) What are are you thinking about getting in relation to the show? Mm. I know we talked before about you getting a comical tramp stamp. I'm not getting a comical (laughs) tramp stamp. (laughs) I told you, man. I'm going to get comical over the top of my stomach and podcast underneath it. (laughs) Like murder face? (laughs) Poe buddy's nerfic. This mess is a place. (laughs) No, uh, I don't know, man. I I thought about the logo. You know, put the logo maybe somewhere in my arm or maybe on my ankle or something like that. I mean, you keep on telling me I should do a Lord Horsicles one. You know, maybe a horse head someplace. But I'm not a horse fan. So it just doesn't, you know, even though I created the character, just... Don't lie. You love horses. You can't. You can't deny it at this point. I am not a horse person. You're a horse lover. I'm not, ho- I not a horse lover. <laughs> we all know it. I told you. I'm going to do something to the Lord Horsecles here down the road. Nah, you can't do anything, Lord Horsecles. <laughs> I already told you what's going to happen if you try it. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Get tortilla man? No, I, I'm honestly thinking about just getting the logo. No, oh, what the hell, man? So why can you just get the logo and I got to go get a damn horse? I didn't say you had to. I just had to say it had to be somehow related to the show. Huh. Okay. So I can get a tad of merman. Sure. I can get Beast Man. You can do Merman and Beast Man. Nice. I can rock a Beast Man tattoo. <laughs> on your lower back? <laughs> Not on my lower back. But like on my leg or something, maybe. I don't know. You know, it's going to take time. We've had a few crazy things, moments. We've talked about a lot of stupid crap on this show. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know yet. I still think you should get the Fifty Shades of Nay tattoo. Fifty Shades of Nay? <laughs> I'm not doing that. It means I have a picture of Sean on me somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> He'd love you forever, man. Why not just get the horse clay sitting on the toilet? That, that could work, too. With the big old, what kind of dick looker? <laughs> hey, you get your Ten Commandments. Uh... Oh, get my Ten Commandments <laughs> tattooed on me? I'm yeah. going to hell now. Thanks, man. <laughs> you can get the pizza tattooed on your on your arm. Hail to the crust. Hail to the crust. 
crazy ass. <laughs> There's all kinds of fun ideas. So if anybody out there has some uh, some interesting suggestions for us, go ahead and reach out to us on Facebook or Twitter and let us know what you'd like to see us do. Oh, that's insane. Uh, there's no guarantee we're going to do what you're suggesting, but uh, we still like to laugh at ideas. <laughs> I think I, I've actually thought about getting a Harley tat and then maybe like on her hammer, maybe have comical podcasts on it or something like that, or Harley wearing a Lord Horse to Clue shirt or something like that somewhere along the line. I don't know. I've always wanted to get a Harley tattoo, and I've been thinking about it. And so that's what I may do. I don't know. You know I'm tossing it around. Do you have any tattoos right now? Yeah, I have two. What are they? Uh, one uh, is Sylvester the Cat, as I was one of my favorite characters of all time. Uh, and he's wearing a Mardi Gras t-shirt, and he has Mardi Gras beads on, because I was a real jackass back in the day. I used to go to Mardi Gras <laughs> all the time and do all kinds of stupid crap. So what do you mean back in the day? <laughs> I don't do any of that crap anymore. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so I got that one. I forgot what in summer. I don't know what the hell I was thinking, but I got it. The other one is more special, more religious. Uh, when my grandmother passed, it was you know really hard on me, so I got a nice Celtic cross on it. And I was going to put a scroll over it and write my grandmother's name on it, but uh, I didn't do it. I just left the Celtic cross on it. It's really nice. And so it's better than what I was going to do before that. Before, my, <laughs> before all that happened, I was going to – I'm big into Digimon. Uh, not Pokemon, but Digimon. Okay. And one of the characters is called uh, Greymon, which is basically is a Tyrannosaurus Rex, but he's a big dinosaur. But he has like oversized hands and oversized feet. Well, the the bad one is called Dark War Greymon, and he's pretty badass. And I thought about getting him on my arm, and and I forgot who was it to tell me, "Are you an idiot?" <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I don't need another cartoon it, on my arm." <laughs> it wasn't me; I would have encouraged it. I know you would have. <laughs> <laughs> so that didn't come to pass. And then the day, you know, when I got the cross, and so that's how that happened. That's cool. I don't have any, so this would be my first one. Oh yeah, but uh, I feel like if we make it to 100 episodes, that's an accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, more than just, and it's something that's got to be celebrated. You should get the logo of you and me, with me having the head on my arm. I don't know about that. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> but that's uh, that's pretty much it for what's coming next. We got we got a lot in the pipeline, so just keep tuned. Yeah, and who knows how many other uh, cons we'll be attending. Yeah, hopefully Alamo City again. Definitely oh. Amazing Houston Con again. Yeah, well, we know you're going to Alamo City. I, okay, you can look me right in the face and tell me that I know we're going to Alamo City Con. It doesn't matter if we go for one day or whatever day we're going, but we're going because I know you want to see Manu Bennett. I do. I really want to meet Manu Bennett. Uh, he came. He came to Houston four times, and he came to uh, New Orleans once. Uh, he, he was all over Texas and Louisiana a bunch of times, and it was always at the cons that I couldn't attend. <laughs> so I never got the chance to meet him. And I was a huge fan of him as Crixus and Spartacus, and I was a huge fan of him as Deathstroke and Arrow. Uh, so I, I would really like to meet that guy. So I know we're going. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're definitely going this year. It'd be awesome to meet him. It's gonna be pretty cool. Yeah, I hope so. So that's it. Yeah, you want to move on to news? Yeah, why not? Uh, what do you want first, movie or TV? There is no comic news this week. Really? Yeah. Did you add another segment into it? I want porn news. I don't have any of that. Okay. <laughs> then give me some TV. Okay, TV news. Uh, so apparently they released the name of the Flash and Arrow spinoff, and it's going to be called The Legends of Tomorrow. Oh, that going to be something like Flaro. Or, uh... Flaro? <laughs> <laughs> Some crap like that. Who knows? <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> uh, but we're going to get the first look at some of those characters like Hot Girl on the uh, Flash finale next week. Huh. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Hey, did you see that, by the way? The Flash finale? You see like Arrow, Flash, and freaking uh, Firestorm? No, I, I haven't seen anything about it yet. But... Oh, yeah. They're standing there about to take on uh, the reverse Flash. Cool. That Well, I'm sure that we'll see the other characters because of that. Oh, so, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. Uh Powers, the uh, PlayStation Network exclusive show, Mm -hmm. was renewed for a second season, Hmm. uh, but the showrunner, Charlie Houston, is not going to be returning because of creative differences. Ah. So, did you you finish watching that? I gave you the first five episodes, I think. Uh, No. Did you watch any of it? No. (laughs) (laughs) Well, darn. Okay. Well, I I actually liked it. Uh, It was a little slow, and from what I've heard, it's very different from the comics. Uh, I never read Powers. I've only ever read the most recent series of Powers, which is you know way later in the future than what happened in the original. Uh, That's kind of what put me off. What? The book. The book that put you off from watching it? it. It was pretty good, though. It took a little while to get going, but once it did, it, it became very interesting to me. I usually don't turn down anything you tell me to watch, even things I can't freaking stand, a la Daredevil. But... Uh... <laughs> well, I, we have it on, on record that you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I said it was okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, I don't know. I just couldn't get into this one. Maybe it's because I was just overwhelmed with so much other stuff I needed to catch up on. That could be it. But you should give it another try. I, I was surprised at how good it got towards the end. Okay. And I'm, I'm looking forward to a second season. When I get some time, I'll watch it. Cool. Uh, let's see. CBS announced that they've ordered a full season of Supergirl. I saw that. It's going to air in June of 2016. I don't know how I feel about CBS doing it. Well, uh, CBS is the parent company for both the CBS network and CW. Oh, okay. I'm good. So... I'm sure people from both groups will be involved and there might even be the potential for a crossover there since they have the same parent company. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I've been pretty freaking amazed with the CW man. I, I have do- too. They've been doing a really good job and, uh, I zombie was renewed for a second season. Saw speaking, that speaking of CW. Yeah. Chad Rook, <laughs> Chad Rook. Yeah. And, and other people, mm-hmm. uh, what's his name? The guy who played the, uh, the bad guy zombie, the one who's turning other people and then forcing them to buy brains from him. Uh, he's going to be a comic loser. Oh, so nah, he he might be a good interview. I can't think of his name right nah, now. It's escaping me as well. Uh, <laughs> it's all about the chick, man. Yeah. And then uh, lastly, Tom Hardy has come out and said that he really wants to play the Punisher in the Marvel series, the Marvel Ooh. Netflix series. So that would be really cool. I think he's a good choice. Oh, okay. I could probably go with that. Yeah. I could see him. Oh, man. He's a total badass. Yeah, see, really that's is. what I'm talking about. <laughs> so he could pull off he could pull off Moon Knight too. Shit, doing both. I'm down with that. Talking the Bane voice. <laughs> don't, 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 don't talk in the Bane voice. <laughs> oh man, I'm 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 stoked now. Yeah, that would be a really cool choice. So hopefully Marvel listens and uh you know it's not like another Tyrese situation. <laughs> Come on. Hell yeah, let's get violent. So moving on to movies. Okay. Uh, Marvel announced that Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely who are responsible for writing all three of the Captain America movies, including Civil War, uh, have been picked up to write the Avengers Infinity War movies. Oh, that's good. I know that the Russo brothers are directing them, but now we know who the writers are. That's going to be good. And I I feel pretty confident in these guys as the script writers. I have a problem with Captain America 1. I thought Captain America 2 was, as you know, was the bomb. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, that's that's good. Yeah, that's That's pretty cool. Smart move. Uh, Hugh Jackman today confirmed that Wolverine Immortal... Number three is going to be his last time playing the character. Damn it. So he's done. Jesus, just because he can't show up in some other movie? That the whole pissy contest thingy? It could be something to do with that, or it could be the fact that he's just getting old, man. Dude, he's freaking Wolverine. I mean, he's, he's still ripped, and then and you know, with the CGI and stuff, they still make him look fairly young. But he's getting older, man. He's got to be tired of working out as hard as he does, and you know, he's already made a shitload of money. I, I can't... I can't fault him for walking away from the character at this point. I understand. He's a good actor. He's a good actor. I've seen him in other things other than Wolverine. It's just when you look at Wolverine in the comics and you look at him, if anyone was ever, it's like Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool, okay? If anyone ever could play that, it's, I don't know who you replace him with. Well, aside from the fact that he's like 6'4 and Wolverine in the comics is like 5'4. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand. That doesn't matter, but it's like. And Canadian, <sighs> which Hugh Jackman's not. <laughs> it's okay, he's close. <laughs> <laughs> There's some uh, major differences it's between all right. the characters. It's, it's great, you know. Oh, yeah, well. He, I, he, he did own the character and he did make it, make it into himself. So I, I see what you're saying. It's going to be hard to find somebody to replace him and play Wolverine, but. Wolverine's dead in the comics, and nobody's missing him. So Wolverine dying in the movies, I think, is fine, too. Nice. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> I just hope he goes out with a bang, you know? Like, really, really good, really good final one under him. Because if it's a stinker, that's going to leave a bad taste in his mouth, you know? I just hope they, whoever does it, whoever's directing, whoever's writing it, it's just really hey, and good. It, and if uh, comic movies are still popular 20 years from now, we can always come back and be Old Man Logan. Nice. Right? Hey, look at you. <laughs> look at you thinking. So, I mean, it may not end up being his last movie, but... Shit, you need to go to Hollywood. <laughs> they don't want me. <laughs> <laughs> so next, uh, did you see the images of the Suicide Squad cast photo? <laughs> yes, I did. What did you think? I didn't like it. Any of it? Or did you only look at Harley? <laughs> <laughs> Who else was in that picture? <laughs> Everybody. Boomerang's in there. Uh, Deadshot's in there. The whole Suicide Squad team is there. Killer Croc's there. You didn't even pay attention. <laughs> you just looked at Harley. <laughs> I was disappointed. Well, Harley's what disappointed me. They, they went with the uh, New 52 look, and it's not exactly the New 52 look either. Mm-mm. She I mean, she's wearing the booty shorts, and she's got the, the like roller skate kind of shoes, and she's got the, uh, the short jacket thing, and her hair is dyed light pink and light blue. That's the only thing that I, I really had a problem with. Like every, the, the outfit itself doesn't bother me that much. Mm-hmm. I feel like her hair should be solid one color or the other. Like It should be really dark red or really dark blue or like dark red, dark black or... All blonde, 
But the the faded pink and the faded blue, I did like that. Yeah, it's white trash Harley. <laughs> it's white trash Harley. Yeah. That's that's not a bad way to put it. I'm not happy with it. And if she doesn't speak right, I'm going to be more pissed. A lot of people were angry about it. What, what did you think about Deadshot? Did you look at Will Smith at all? He looks freaking confused. Like, what am I doing here? Did I sign up? I should have done this. Maybe I should go back and do I Am Legend 2 or some shit. <laughs> did you see the full Deadshot costume, including mask? No. That looks really badass, actually. Uh, they did a really good job with that. The only thing I'm going to say, it's Will freaking Smith, so I know he can act. Well, he's probably not going to be wearing his mask the entire time either because it is Will Smith. But at least he can act. Yeah. yeah. So he'll be able to act. I think a lot of the people in the movie will be able to act. It's just a question of whether it's a good script, whether DC can handle having that many characters in the movie at once, and whether they hit the the big characters in the right way. I mean, everything we've seen about Joker and Harley at this point is very disappointing. I want to pull my hair out of my head. (laughs) And I mean, those are the characters that everybody wants to see, is Deadshot, Joker, and Harley. Deadshot, so far, I think looks okay. Uh, The costume design looks badass. I have faith in Will Smith as a good actor. I mean, he is an odd choice for the character, but I think he'll do an okay job. This shit's going to come out and bomb, and they're going to have to reboot. Margot Robbie's a decent actress. Everything I've seen her in, I've enjoyed. So I have a little bit of faith that she's going to do a good job, but I really don't like the uh, the hair thing. I really she she doesn't she doesn't scream Harley when I look at her. No, she does not. She she screams like roller derby chick. You know we're lucky. Because we're lucky DC didn't pick like Calista Flockhart to be Harley. Oh, it could have been so much worse. I, yeah, I know. I agree. I agree. We got to count our blessings, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. But the worst of them all is definitely going to be the Joker if they go with the route <sighs> that uh, they've shown so far. Jared Leto with the crazy, stupid tattoos. Like it's one thing if Joker's all tatted up. You know, I mean, every, a lot of people in prison get tats. He looks like the sick guy from the Dallas Buyer Club. <laughs> well, he was already prepared for the role. I guess. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Jesus. But I mean. The tattoos themselves are stupid. They're all like, ha, 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 ha. And like, you know, my name is Mr. J and stupid stuff. Like, nobody in their right mind, or even in like their crazy mind, would get that shit tattooed on them. You know what's going to happen is he's going to walk underneath the water and all the ink's going to come off. It could be. It could be. It could all be marker. There's an image that came out today that was leaked of Harley tattooing all that shit onto him. Uh, Did you see that? No. Uh, on, the, on his back, she was tattooing the word puddin'. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of funny. I mean, there's at least one one decent laugh in there. You know, I've always told you when you go into movies, whether it be comic book movies or any other kind of movies, anything you know about it, all based off of a book, that you got to kind of let it go and kind of like, you know, suspend whatever you know and just see what they do. Go yeah. into it with open mind. I can't do it. <laughs> these are movies... When, when, it, when, it's your, when it's your favorite character, it's going to be hard to do. I know it's going to be really hard for me to go and see Deadpool, and if it doesn't live up to my expectations, I'm going to be crushed. Everything I've seen on that so far looks like it's going to be. Uh, I agree. Ryan Reynolds seems like he's doing an amazing job. The script that I read a few months ago, I was really happy with. Uh, I have a lot of hope and a lot of high expectations for it. And normally, I have I, I have like average to low expectations for every movie I see, and I'm always pleasantly surprised. So it's really weird for me to go into a movie with high expectations. Because if it doesn't live up to it, I'm going to be pretty upset. I don't think Ryan Reynolds is going to let it be crap this time. I, I don't think so either. But we won't know until we see it. So I'm probably going to feel about Harley and Joker the way you felt in Deadpool and freaking X Men. <laughs> Wolverine Origins. Origins. Yeah. Suicide Squad is going to be your Wolverine Origins. I will walk the fuck out <laughs> and ask for my fucking money when I go out. I won't blame you at all if it's terrible. And I will cause a storm as I go out. You'll hear me yelling, the fuck is this? <laughs> I'm fucking comical podcast and this is shit. Let's walk the fuck out of here. Everybody can look forward to that rant next year. <laughs> oh, shit. There'll be an episode of Comical Podcast. We'll go see the movie, and then we'll come record. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll, it'll be an hour of me just ranting. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's the only Suicide Squad news. Uh, there's a couple more things. Okay. X-Men Days of Future Past, the Rogue Cut, the uh, elongated version of the movie that had Anna Paquin that we never saw, uh, is scheduled for a DVD release of July 14th. So if you want to see the extended version of Days of Future Past, that's an option now. Okay. So that's kind of cool. I like that movie. I mean, I own it on DVD, so I bought a regular DVD, so I could probably give that to my mom. Maybe pick this one up on Bluey. I, you know, I'm a fan of the Rogue and a pack yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, oh, I'm well, curious. If you, if you get it, I'd like to borrow it and watch oh, it. Oh, yeah, no problem. Uh, I, I have the Blu-ray of the regular version. I got you. <laughs> so I don't want to buy it twice. I got you. <laughs> uh, and then lastly... Matt Freeman, who played Bilbo Baggins in the Hobbit movies, uh, was apparently cast in an unknown role in Civil War. Who could you imagine Bilbo Baggins playing in Civil War? Puck. That's what I thought, too. (laughs) But he's not really that short. I don't know, man. 
Can't even think of anybody else but Puck. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to pin down. So I'll think about it, and if I come up with any, maybe I'll mention it on the next show. Nice. <laughs> There's one more piece of news. Okay, what's the news? Uh, and this is not related to comics or movies or TV, but it's related to podcasts. Okay. So you know our friend Brian, Bryfi, from the Bryfi podcast, who comes on our show on a regular basis. Minnie Miguel. Minnie Miguel. Uh-huh. Uh, it was announced today that he is expecting his first child. So I just wanted to quickly say congratulations, Brian. Man, how did Casey knock him up? I don't know. <laughs> you said Brian's expecting a child? Well, they know Brian. They don't know Casey. <laughs> <laughs> He's the carrier. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> it's like twins. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, Brian, congratulations. Just wanted to shout out to you. And uh, if you need anything, just let us know. I know. We already got names. If it's a boy... Spicy guacamole. <laughs> yeah. And if it's a girl, bland guacamole. Because there's no, there's no guys out there that want to date a girl named Bland. That's right. <laughs> we were joking earlier, and Miguel said, that's the real mini Miguel. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh. <laughs> that's no one. <laughs> so, what did you do to Brian? I didn't do anything. <laughs> he has been sitting in my chair. That's true. Maybe that's what happened. It's like sitting on a toilet seat. <laughs> oh, that's nasty. <laughs> Speaking of toilet seats. <laughs> So congrats, man. And that's pretty much it. So uh, just want to remind everybody, there's a few places you can find us on the internet. We are at nerdbong.com, wickedradionetwork.com, beyondthedawn.com, and on iTunes and Stitcher. And if you find us on iTunes or Stitcher, please go out there and leave us a five-star review. Uh, We are also now available on SoundCloud and YouTube. And you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash comicalpodcast. And on Twitter, I am at comicalpodcast. I'm at comicalpodcast, too. And uh, lastly, Instagram is also at Comical Podcast. So go out there, follow us, and uh, don't forget, keep on laughing, bitches. Comic Palooza 2015 is almost here. You'll see your favorite celebrities, comic book creators, and authors. Hear super cool musical acts. Experience crazed cosplay events. Rowdy professional wrestlers. Raucous roller derby girls. Literally thousands of hours of programming and so much more. Remember, Comic Palooza at the George R. Brown Convention Center in Houston, Texas. Memorial Day weekend, May 22nd to 25th. Get your passes today. Head over to www.comicpalooza.com for all the details. <laughs> 